Good morning, good morning, St. Lucia. Listen, the sun is shining. I'm here at home and I am so grateful to be here on this soil in the Helen of the West Indies. And you know how I like to say it? I'm pleased to be chilling in the West Indies. And guess what? I'm back. We got to shout out Maureen for holding the fort all whilst I'm out. And she's getting some well-deserved R&R. So, you know, as they'd say, guess who's back? I'm here to wake you up with some good vibes and in the know. So welcome officially to DBS this morning. I'll still introduce myself. I'm hoping that you do remember me. I am Chayla Mendez, now Shalari, but I am here to brighten up your day and bring you all that good energy and we'll keep you in the know. So let's take in our morning news highlights. Good morning. The new minimum wage will come into effect on October 1st, 2024. Prime Minister Philip J. P. announced this during the Emancipation Day celebration in Soufre, just as he promised. Our forefathers would be proud if we can build a society of equity and justice. This is why, on this 1st August 2024, my government is implementing the first ever new minimum wage for the workers of this country, which is effective from 1st October 2024. No worker in this country will earn less than $1,130 a month or $52 daily or $6.52 per hour. 13,000 people are expected to benefit immediately with salary increases as a result of that policy. The minimum wage does not include any payment that an, an employee is entitled to, such as overtime, share of service charge, commissions, bonus, or profit sharing. While the Prime Minister acknowledged the aim of businesses is to turn a profit, he also urged employers to cooperate with the government to improve the standard of living of workers. Prime Minister Pierre also announced an increase in government pension payments to $725 and NIC pension payments to $500 effective August 1st, 2024. The Holy Trinity Anglican Church was the venue for the third edition of the annual Breadfruit and Breadnut Festival on Thursday. The annual festival, which is held on Emancipation Day, takes the form of an exhibition of the broad range of breadfruit byproducts along with cooking demonstrations. What we are hoping is that with what we are doing, it will continue to enkindle people's consciousness to eat healthy. Because what we realize a lot of the sicknesses we have is basically because of bad eating habits and the bad things that we eat. Yes, we're talking about emancipation today, but I would hope that the emancipation would rebound into us being able to reduce on our import bill, we, food import bill, we being able to plant more of what we need to use, especially as a health is concerned, and we'll be able to minimize on all the things that we buy, which we know is not good at the supermarkets and so on. Because really and truly, we are bringing in a lot of imported food that is not good for us. The festival is all part of an effort to get St. Lucians to eat healthier, consume more local produce, and by extension reduce the island's food import bill. The police, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force that is, has launched a probe into a fatal vehicular collision. On Wednesday, July 31st at about 12 p.m., the Denry Police Station received and responded to a report of a vehicular collision along the Denry Prale Highway. At the scene, investigators discovered a damaged sport utility vehicle or SUV and a damaged motorcycle. The two occupants of the SUV and the sole occupant of the motorcycle were conveyed to the St. Jude Hospital for further treatment. The motorcycle rider later passed away whilst in care at the St. Jude Hospital. He has been identified as 32-year-old Christopher Lewis of Prale in Monrepo. As part of a continuous initiative to monitor and address insecticide resistance, the Vector Control Unit of the Environmental Health Division carried out a, a detailed review and evaluation during a follow-up visit. This effort is vital for identifying and resolving operational challenges encountered in implementing insecticide resistance testing. All our vector control officers took part in that exercise last year. And today, what we're doing is just an evaluation, basically assessing the objectives of what happened last year. Um, we have facilitated the facilitators from the Caribbean Public Health Agency here with us for two days, today and tomorrow. And they're going to be basically 
shadowing us to to assess the way that we're doing what we're doing coming from the training that happened last year. The follow-up involved thorough discussions with the vector control team to pinpoint and overcome obstacles with the goal of refining strategies and enhancing the effectiveness of testing protocols to improve control of vector-borne diseases. These are your top stories. Thanks for watching. Welcome back, everybody. This morning has just begun. Grab your cocoa tea. You know, I've been having plenty of that. You may be wondering, what's all this action behind me? But you'll come to find out because we have a special celebratory show in honor of our girl, our 2024 Miss JC, who is also our 2024 National Carnival Queen, Shan Lucien. So we are celebrating. It's been 39 years of a wait, and it's going to be a great show. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. So welcome back to DBS this morning. I feel good. I'm still trying to get used to our humidity, but we are here at the VG Beach. Lord have mercy, our island is lovely. But we are celebrating with our girl, Shan Lush. Well, guess what? We're celebrating and I have some friends here just took a fresh sea bath. Now, if that's not living, I don't know what it is. I need to be like these doggies and jump in this water soon. But right now, we're catching up with the leading lady that has given us Shan her mom and joy good morning saint lucia it is a very exciting day and i know everybody has been rejoicing especially after the great news that our national carnival queen shan lucian has brought home the crown from the 61st jc's pageant all right and it's been a 39 year wait for our sweet helen all right so we are ecstatic we are elated and i'm even happier because i'm quite cozy here right now with the main lady we should be talking to to start this entire story because without her we wouldn't even have shan so this is her mommy how are you doing i'm fine i'm fine and how are you feeling about just you know everything i can imagine it life must have felt like it's in fast forward thanks to Shan and her endeavors but you all seem to be supporting really well so what was that moment for um, being in Antigua with her and just hearing that announcement what was that like for you? Well when I saw her getting all the, the awards I felt great when they announced second runner-up Grenada I said okay I knew her competition could have been Antigua when I heard first runner up Antigua, I said, oh, Lord, this is it. This is it. And I held another Antiguan who's my close friend, who was rooting for her. And, I, and when they announced Shan, let me tell you, there were no words to describe how I felt at that time. It was, I was speechless. I was between half tears and half joy. It was, it was, an, it was an amazing moment. Now, I can tell you, Shan had me losing sleep. I stayed up until 2 a.m. till the end. And like you, once we heard who the first runner up, it was noise in my balcony and we were ecstatic. And at this point, you know, not only yourself and the family is proud, but she has made the entire island just overjoyed. And that in itself, you know, I think a lot of people will look at it like it's a, a heavy burden to bear trying to go into this and the pressure of the pageants. But to just be able to accomplish this, I think it's testimony to the support around her. So what was life like with Shan when she was growing up? She's the best daughter ever. I, that's why I only have one. Um, but she's the best daughter ever. But she always knew that if she makes up her mind to do something, you either go all out and you do it well or not at all. And that's how, that's how we looked at life. And being involved in music, because she followed me everywhere I go as a music educator. So she learned a lot about music and what music can do for you to build up your self-esteem. And, um, and she just got on the stage performing from very young, from four years old, in fact. From three, from four years old, and and that has helped her to boost up her self-esteem and so on. But that has helped her a great deal. Music. Nice. Now, how do you feel knowing that you know your musical bone has rubbed up with her and where it is taking her right now with her life journey? 
I am not taking that for granted because I know a lot of musicians, or a lot of persons who are experts in their field have problems getting their children following their footsteps. So I am grateful that she decided, in fact, when she was going to A-level, I said, Shan, what do you want to do when you leave? She says, mommy, music is my life. So what else can I do? And that's, that's how. And I said, well, if you're doing it, let's go and I'm there with you. And then that's it. Music is our life. Music is our life. Now, with regards to, again, I want to just speak about that support team because, you know, we look at it, we see the accomplishments, we see the performances and everything that she has done on stage. But I think a lot of people take it for granted that it's a lot of sweat, tears, sacrificing when it comes to pageantry. And again, the effort you put in is what you get back. And clearly that shows mm -hmm. for Shan. So what would you say to parents out there? And not just maybe if they have daughters interested in pageantry, but just in general, in terms of supporting their children with what they're passionate about. Well, let me tell you, um, I would say if your child has an aptitude for something, no matter what it is, give them the encouragement. Whether they want to be a mechanic, whether they want to be a plumber, whether they want to do music, because some persons would actually tell me, why is she doing music? And I said, why not music? You know, because because they just they just felt that, where can music take her? But music has taken her right here. Look at what, what I mean, her piano skills, she used that and that just wowed the judges. It wowed, it wowed Antigans on the night. You know, and so music did take her somewhere and music will continue to take her because um, music education is vital and I'm pushing for music education. And I think she thinks the same way that I do in that respect. But I'm saying that parents need to support. You need to support your children no matter what. Give them the full support if they want to become for example, a plumber and you wanted them to be a doctor, you best find the best plumbing school you can ever find and push them in that direction. And that's what you need to do. Push them and get them to do the best they can be in the field that they want to be in. Now you see, we always leave you with some food for thought here on DBS this morning. This is why we always wake you up in the know. So Shan's mommy, Miss Priscilla, thank you so much for having us today and engaging us. And we thank you for giving us Shan and this amazing young woman, hopefully to inspire many more that are to come. So we look forward to this journey and trust me, keep watching DBS this morning because we definitely have to catch up with Shan when she's relaxed and settled. You know, she needs a little R&R &R right now. So thank you so much. Enjoy this celebration and the festivities. I will and thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, good people. Welcome back. I am Chayla, your morning host, and we are going to continue right along now in this segment. Yes, we still have more people to see the movers and shakers behind the scene because a team is very important when you want to have a winning queen. So right now we're going to meet a little bit of that team that has made this magic happen and given Shanda support that she needed so that she can do exactly what she did and bring that crown home. Hey, good people. Good morning and welcome back. Listen, we are still celebrating. The nation is happy. We are all happy. This is all about our girl, Shan Lucien, who has brought home the crown from JC's after 39 years. It was in 1985, Cleopatra Hall, if my sources are correct, and I do know my sources are correct. So we are thrilled that, you know, not only did she blow us away during the carnival season, here she is taking the region by storm. So how are you feeling, Tammy? I'm ecstatic. I'm so excited. I'm excited for Shan. I'm excited for the team. Shan really, really worked hard for this. She is, um, I remember when we spoke about her talent, when we had a discussion about her talent, um, she said, I don't know this song. I'm going to have to learn it. And in a matter of three days, she was sending us a video and she knew the song. And I was like, is that the same person who said that they didn't know this song? Um, so she's very dedicated. Um, so I'm very, very happy for her. She had a great team. Her team really went over and above the call of duty. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank them as well. So, yeah. 
we finally have the JC's crown, so we are ecstatic. Hey, that's why we are making our first listen. This entire show is all about Shan and JC's and the journey. So we heard from her mom earlier. This time, you know, we got to get with some of the movers and shakers that got her here to begin with. And I mean, we were right off the heels of an amazing carnival season. And I think one of the things that really stood out about Shan too is she leaves an impression. And I'll never forget the reveal of the contestants. I was still in the UK and these phone calls were coming through. And when it came to Shan... I was just like, I don't even know this young lady. But I'm like, I like this girl. I'm like, this is who I'm backing. You know, and then, you know, the rest of the season unfolded. And now, like I said, the region is in awe. Online, I followed. I stayed up till 2 a.m., okay? And I know a lot of you are just like me. And, you know, we're watching the comments on social media. And, you know, there was a debate narrowed down to then between Shan and um, obviously Antigua. That was public opinion in the comments. And then once we heard first runner up, everybody in the comments, St. Lucian flags yeah. were raining. Yeah. So you cannot say, people can say what they want about St. Lucian. But let me tell you, when you see we come together and support, we really do. Definitely we do. We really, I was, I was watching as well. And I was looking at the comments and I really felt that St. Lucian's really rallied. Yeah for Shan and that was so impressive my heart was filled and I know that th is that support it really really helps the young ladies because going on stage and having to face an audience alone is a very very difficult thing to do so we praise them we thank them and of course we are going to celebrate this occasion <laughs> So this is what it's about. It's festivities. The island is overjoyed. It feels like, you know, when cricket is here and, you know, West Indies has won. This is what it is. It's the homecoming. And I know we expect so much. I mean, this is so fresh into her reign as well, too. And the other thing is, is this week, it's a very important week in history for women in St. Lucia. We have Shan. And of course, tomorrow we're waiting with, you know, maybe we might get our first Olympic medal. So it's a huge yes. week for us. Yeah. So we're never going to forget this week. Absolutely. And you see, that's why you, like, you could just feel that excitement and that energy in the air from off of the social media and even on the streets. So we are happy. I want to say, you know, this further is a testament to the hard work that you and the team have been doing from Carnival because this is our Carnival baby right there. So St. Lucia, I heard her chaperone is around. So stick around. We'll have a quick word with him. Thank you so much, Tammy. You're welcome. It's from St. Lucia, so I'm here with one of the chaperones, you know, so Jesse is going to represent. Obviously, again, we are celebrating Shan Lucien. First of all, Jesse, I mean, we know Auntie Paula, we know you, and we know all the work that you guys have been putting into pageantry. How does it feel, especially this historic moment, to know that you all have been part of the team? And it takes a lot. I think people don't understand the rules and all what chaperones do because that's vital in helping to give whomever your contestant is their fighting chance. Right, definitely. Um, I think we are all ecstatic and overwhelmed. Um, we have been doing JCs, well, me and Paula, in the capacity of chaperones for many, many years. Um, I remember my first year doing JCs was like 2013 or around there. Um, so it has been a while. It is a, a crown that w w is well sought after throughout pageantry in the region. And it has been far too long since we've had the JCs crown. Um, it is a pleasure. Um, it was a pleasure working with Shan. It is a pleasure working with Shan because we have to continue working with her throughout her reign. Um, we first met at auditions. Paul and I actually were the first two people to deal with Shan because she came to auditions without a chaperone, without help. And we assisted her and she got through auditions and made it to nationals, won nationals, and now is the JC's queen. Um, the process was long and grueling, but Shan made it easy. Um, she is a hard worker. She is focused. She's dedicated. Um, and we are so happy that we finally captured the crown after 39 years and it is only i think we just needed to break that because we'll be capturing it a lot more now <laughs> now you know what jesse has already enlightened you as to the credibility of the chaperone team that shan has so we don't have to go any further. We can believe these words because we know when it comes to the grooming and the training, it's very holistic with what you all do, contrary to what people may want to loosely say. And that's why pageantry really is something that helps bring out a well-rounded woman. And it really, I'd like to think, shows off more than beauty. And again, as we've seen in Shan, it's just like she is that dynamic package. And 
it, there's not many people that can leave an impression. You know, you feel that presence. And Shan definitely does that. Because even whether you're far away from that TV screen, you're connecting with that smile and that energy. And I think that's really one of the most unique things. Even the commentators at JC's, you know, they're talking like, well, you know what, St. Lucia's on my radar. And as the show progressed, you know what? Yeah, St. Lucia. And you can just see slowly she's been leaving her mark and I love that this is just so fresh into her reign, which just leaves you to wonder and want to watch and see the rest of this unfold. Like, yeah, literally what's next. So can I even ask you that? Like, where do we go from here? <laughs> well, um, Shan has a lot under her belt and she has a long year ahead of her. Um, hopefully it goes on to other pageants. We are definitely crossing our fingers that Miss World is something that she would like yes. to do. Um, and I can definitely see her on that international stage. Well, you know what? I know a lot of people at home are happy to hear that because, you know, with my 2 a.m. stay up in the morning to see these results when I, I, I mean, I lost sleep for this and it was so worth it. And next thing I said, and many people in the comments were like, Miss World, Miss Universe, we need to see her here. So the island is excited. She has the support. We've been seeing the love. And Jesse, to you and to um, Paula as well as chaperones, we thank you all because it's a lot. It's like literally being mommy bear and daddy bear and everything so thank you for all the hard work that both of you have done all right, thank thanks you. now saint lucia i think shan is still here let's go see if we can catch our girl so dbs family now you know it's going to be a blessed morning i've managed to catch our queen but she's a very busy lady but she does have something that she'd like to say to you Good morning, St. Lucia. I would like to thank you so much for all your support and your kind words and the overwhelming love that I've been receiving. Good stuff, well, St. Lucia. We're going to let her go because she has some other rounds to make. But don't worry, you'll be seeing her very soon on DBS this morning and we can sit back and find out everything we'd like to know and get to know our girl Shan way better. So Shan, congratulations. We are proud of you. And mwah, all the best on this journey and we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. This morning we will be doing a groovy stretch routine to Cherio Baby by Eric Donaldson. Just step it out. Four, three, two, roll the shoulders, hey. Take it back. Bring it out, push the arms back. Thumbs to the floor. Give yourself a nice big hug. Yeah, not a little hug. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nice and big. Open out. Push back. Switch the arms. Four, three, two, one. Open out. Push back. Bring the arms up. If you don't believe, I do. And just sway it side Baby, to side. To you, Give me a bigger sway. Sway. Four. Three. Two. One. Back up. Facing the front, bend the arm to the back. Four, three. Oh. Arms. One, take it up. And just reach. Four, three, two, 
one step it out and Four, three, two, one. Open out. Roll the hips. Next side. Deep breath. And exhale. Hey, good people. So again, this has been such an exciting show. One, not only is it my first show back since I've been here. So you have me for a little bit. So we're going to have some good times together. But also it is on the heels of this victory by Shan Lucien. And just a fun fact for you. The last time we had this crown was 1985. So yes, it was a 39 year wait and this is why this entire show was dedicated to her because we got to celebrate when we're doing amazing things and this is what it's all about so this wraps up our monday hopefully we started your week off the right way and um I feel like I'm starting mine off the best way because I'm here in St. Lucia with sun, sand, sea, and everything that I've been missing. And let me tell you, with me stepping out to the UK and being back here, St. Lucia, we are blessed. We are special. Our island is something magical. So on that note, don't let anything spoil your day. It's too early in the week. Go out with those good vibrations. We did our part. So you now go spread it. And you know what? The ocean is calling me. So on that note, family... I'll see you tomorrow, but I'm making a run for the beach. Bye!